Right, it is Match Masterclass time again, and you join us at an incredibly windy Decoy Lakes. It seems whenever I film here at Decoy, the wind really wants to blow, but we are filming on Beastie Lake, and we are connected to something that is really pulling. <laughs> He's got me underneath this bridge, and at the moment, doesn't want to come back. But today's Match Masterclass is all about paste fishing, and it really does lean itself to the summer mums targeting those bigger fish. Although you wouldn't think it's summer today, technically, I think in a couple of days time when we're filming this, it is officially British summertime. So it's a great method. It's one that I know an awful lot of people, my pole's getting blown around, an awful lot of people are very happy to use and can put some big weighted fish together. So it's also a method that can be very frustrating, but hopefully today's video can put some of those frustrations aside. I'll show you my way of fishing it, and then hopefully you may be able to take some of that into your own fishing. So here we go, first fish of the day coming towards the net, and then we'll get into the session and talk to you in more detail about pace fishing. There we go, first one of the day, and it's not taken long, pretty much fishing for about three or four minutes, but there is plenty of fish in here and some real old warriors, which that one certainly is. We're probably gonna catch a few a bit bigger than that today, but that is a start and it proves that the paste is working. So what I will do is we'll get straight on into it. What should we look at first? Let's go with the rig. We'll take a look at the rig first and I'll show you my rig for paste fishing. Let's hope it's gonna be a day full of those plus bigger fish as well. Now, if there's any wind noise on the mics, I apologize straight away. We're trying the best we can in what is one of the windiest days I've filmed. I don't know if there's some sort of hurricane, it feels like it, but let's get straight in to the rig because this has been, or this is my pace fishing rig that I've used now for three or four years. I've tried a few different other ones, but for me personally, this is the one I'm settled on and it just works for me. I'll explain what happens and how I fish it and the reasons why I set it up like this during the session, but let's just look at the rig in detail first. So first thing, uh, we've got green slick elastic. You're just gonna have to marry that to the size of the fish. So if they're smaller, use lighter, heavier, use heavier. I've got 018 mainline. I don't really mess around when I'm pace fishing. Normally, I'm targeting big fish, so 018 mainline. My float choice isn't actually a dedicated pace float. So this is a Matrix Power Slim. Basically, all I look for nowadays is just a nice thick bristle and a stable float. I feel for me personally, gone are the days we used to have the massive long bristles and fish the pace like that. I don't really do that now. So all I look for is a real thick bristle and a stable float. So that's my choice for that. But this is probably where the most interesting point comes. So how I shot my rig is actually with an inline Olivet that completely slides free running on the rig. That will become apparent why when I talk about how I fish it. And then that runs down to a little matrix rubber bead that sits just above a six inch hook link, which is 016. And then I've got a very large size 12 hook on. You want a big hook, you're burying a big bait, and you want it to house that nice and safely. So a big hook, strong line, and a little inline Olivet. That works for me. Again, like I said, I've tried other ways. I did go down the route of no shot on my rig at all and you'd sell if your pace came off because your float would pop up, all sorts of stuff like that I tried. But this is just the one that works for me. And if you find something that works for you, then I always say, if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. So that's the rig. I will show you more detail about what the Olivet does and why in a second, but I'm quite eager to get out there and try and catch another one. So let me try and do that. Let's try and catch one more and then we'll talk to you a bit more detail about this pot we've got on here, what we're feeding, how we're fishing it, and everything like that.
that is two fish from two casts. Let's hope that continues. But now, the perfect opportunity to talk you through just a little bit more about pace fishing in general, where I fish it, when I think it's best and stuff like that. The actual paste itself that I've got here, I'm gonna do a little section on that shortly. So keep watching if you wanna know how I prepare my bait. But let's talk about hooking it to start with, because it's a little bit different to perhaps how everyone, a lot of people you find push it flat, put the hook in it and fold it round it. But I don't actually do that. What I do is I give it a little mold in my hand into a ball and then like a cheese grater almost, you put your line through the middle and then just pull your hook into the bottom. So that now means that the paste has got all that line in it as well. So I have my paste quite soft, which I said I'll discuss in a moment, but that now gives me as much as I can to keep that on. Now getting out there nice and straightforward is you're gonna have to use a pole pot. So what I do, like I just done there, is I just drop in my paste in a pole pot and that pot wants to be a couple of foot away from your pole tip. And what that's creating is a U in your line. From the tip of my pole to this paste pot is now creating a U of line as I hang it there. And that stops tangles. And this is where, and this is the reason why I use the Olivet. You see the Olivet is hanging at the bottom of that U. Sometimes if you put shot on your rig or anything like that, as you ship out, it can all spin up and become a bit of a mess. So long as you have your pole pot far enough back, you create that lovely little arc with your sliding Olivet at the bottom. There's nothing that can go wrong and it's nice and straightforward. Bait wise, in top of that pot, I've got my paste in there already. All I'm gonna do in here, I've got some four mil pellets that I've soaked up. Again, we're gonna go for a bait section. I put a little bit in with my paste and that is pretty much all I do. So we're gonna try now and fish away as I talk to you and just show you a couple more things that's very important. The pole pot, as I mentioned now, is a couple of foot behind my pole tip. So what I'm gonna to have to do is reach forward and then cup in my bait over where I'm fishing. And then as you come back, you pull your float over the top of that paste. It's really important now not to move it. That's not a bite, that's just my paste pulling it under. It'll come back in a second. But it's important really not to move it because your paste is so soft. If you move your float, you will just rip it out of the paste and you won't be fishing properly. That is made a lot harder by how windy it is. But we're sitting here now, It's the trap's set. I'm holding it as still as I can. And what we're waiting for really is quite a positive bite. You will get a few liners and stuff, that's natural with paste. Don't particularly worry about those. Wait for a real nice positive bite. That's why I use the bristle nice and thick and hopefully you can connect with a fish. One thing that I will say is if you miss a bite, you have to come in and repeat the process, but don't be put off by it. It used to drive me insane. I used to really not like pace fishing for that exact reason, but actually I've got my head around it now. And if you miss a bite, all you're doing is refeeding your swim. You're putting that little ball of paste in every time. And quite often, you want to miss a few bites just to keep topping up your swim. If you're hitting every single bite, you, what you'll find is you'll have to refeed with either a big cup or something like that. But yeah, if you miss a few bites, it sounds quite weird, but don't be put off by it because you are refeeding your swim every time. There we go, there's a bite I've missed. That was a fairly positive bite. So we're just gonna repeat the process. Again, we're gonna make that ball. And if you're not getting bites within, let's say, I find this quite a, a quick method. If you're not getting bites within three or four minutes, you probably wanna put a bit more feed in, but we're making that ball, pull the line through the middle, the hook into it, and that's nice and ready. Slide the cut back, in goes your paste, a few more pellets, and we go back out there again. I do find that with paste fishing, for me personally, just to quickly lean that forward, drop in your paste, pull the float back on top of it. For me personally, I do like to fish it quite short just because you've got to do that lean and you, you do miss bites. If I try and fish this at like 13 meters, for example, clearly you'll catch on it, but it's just a lot more frustrating. So there's two scenarios that I find paste very, very effective. First of all, fishing short like this, targeting big fish, sit there and wait for them. And secondly, which is the way that we're going to go into perhaps later in the session, I think it's a bait that's massively overlooked for 
fishing down the edge. So I do use a different color and different flavor paste. I don't do a lot different to the rig, that's all the same, but I just, like I said, feel it's very overlooked paste down the edge and it can be very, very effective. So that's all set nicely. We're getting a few indications to show it's some fish there. Hopefully, in not too, oh, not too distant future, we are gonna have another one to show you. But let's wait for a positive bite and hope we connect with a fish. There we go. Just like that. A few seconds and a positive bite and we are in to another fish. So it's looking like currently everything's going quite smoothly. So what I'm gonna do is concentrate on getting this one in. I think I'm gonna catch two or three more because it's always good fun. And then the next thing we'll look at is actually the paste itself and how I prepare it. There we go, what a wicked little section that was. We caught some flying bream, as they're ones that hit the surface as you hook them, and then obviously the proper ones you'd expect to catch on pace. So that has been really good, but I'm just taking a break from the fishing, and we've spun the cameras round to face into this wind. Not sure that's a good idea, but for two reasons. First of all, we want to take a look at the bay itself, and then secondly, we're going to have a little go down the edge and finish down there, because I said it is quite often overlooked fishing pace down the edge. But Let's get on to the actual bait itself. So the paste I use is Dynamite Baits Extreme Paste, and it couldn't be any more simple to mix. So you can see the paste here, this is the final article, but to start with, all you need to do, the instructions are on the bag as well, is you need to pick, mix two parts paste, which is dry ground bait pretty much, to one part water. So whatever measure you choose to use, you need two lots of paste to one lot of water. You mix that together, and initially you'll think it's quite ruined because it'll be really sloppy, but give it 10 minutes and it will dry and be pretty much like this here that I've got on my hand, which is a nice soft, but actual sort of, it's firm enough to actually hold on your hook. Now, the only thing that I do extra, because I do like mine slightly softer than what that would create, is I do add a little bit of the pellet soak. So what, after 10 minutes, after it's dry, what I'll do is add a little glug of that and then remix. And then that is what we finish with what we've got here. So slightly softer than what it would be if you just went the two parts paste to one part water. But that for me is exact consistency I'm looking for. Now, whenever I'm fishing out in the middle of the lake, like we have been, the betaine green is the one that I absolutely love. But when we go down the edge, I don't know why, this is just pure, this is just me as an angler, everyone has their little things, don't they? I like to switch over to the krill. For me, big, bigger fish down the edge, and krill is the ultimate big fish bait. So it's mixed in exactly the same way. The liquid that I add with that one is the pellet soak in the Amino Original. Again, just to make it slightly more sloppy, but a bit more attraction in it, and you end up with a perfect paste that's just ideal to hold on the hook enough, but also pretty much as they suck it in, evaporates into nothing. The only other bait I have with me is some soaked four mil pellet. These are just basically, I cover these in water. These are the F1 sweet pellets. Leave them for perhaps two or three minutes, drain the water off, and they're just ever so slightly damp. If I squeeze them, they would just nip together, but they are pretty much just sort of dampened down four mils. That's 
The only thing I really feed in my paste, hemp is actually quite good. I know a lot of people use hemp and paste. So if you want to try something different, perhaps a little bit of that. So what I'll do is I'll talk you through how I would start my session. So I've fed absolutely nothing down the side here on paste. And what I would do is in my pole pot, I would put about a half a cup of four mil pellets. I'm going to go quill paste, literally one little dollop of quill paste. So I'm going to do is pop this down the side there now. And that is how I would start my session. And then pretty much, as I said earlier, when you're missing bites, you're just topping that swim up. So you don't very often need to repot it, but I do just like to put a pot down there, like I just have, just to kick the session off and get something in the area. So what I'll do is I'll swap that top kit for my fishing kit and we'll get down the edge and see if there's anything down there. So let's see what this is like. Now, rig wise, it is exactly the same as the rig that I showed you. I still use the sliding Olivet concept and I keep everything exactly the same with the pole pot, just a couple of foot away from the tip. But the only thing I change, and this is literally only because it's me being me, is I change the krill paste down the edge. It's just one of those things that once you get something you like, you just stick to it. So let's extend that arm out, drop the paste in down the edge. I've only put in just the paste there, just purely because we've just fed that big pot of bait. But as I mentioned, it is a method and a bait that is quite often overlooked fishing down the edge. And Wow, <laughs> we've got one. And I really don't think it should be overlooked. And that would be your proof right there. It's been, what, a few seconds and we've got a bite. The only time I don't use paste down the edge, I must admit, is if it's really, really shallow, then potentially, I just don't think it works the best. Again, that's just my personal opinion, but when it's really shallow, you can see all the tails up and you're getting quite a lot of line bites, stuff like that then I think potentially paste isn't the one for that. But apart from that, I think it's pretty consistent. And if you've got a bit of depth of water, then you can catch a few fish. So that's exactly what I'm gonna try and do now. Concentrate on getting this one in and have a little go down the edge and see if we can have some bigger fish to finish with. There we go, there is another fish down the edge and it has been really good to be honest with you. Very consistent as you would expect. And although this one doesn't feel massive, a lot of the fish we've caught have been the bigger fish you can expect to catch down the edge and that Paige definitely selects. But I'll tell you what's been good fun as well. I've recently upgraded my pole to the MTX V2 and this is the first time that I've caught proper fish on it. I must say it's handled them extremely well. So I always get asked what I use. If you want a pole that doesn't break the bank, but still performs well, then take a look at that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, wait, that one died, right? I'm gonna call this one my last fish because it looks like the weather may be closing in and potentially a bit of rain is coming, but there we go. One to finish on. Probably the smallest one we've had down the edge, but it's been great fun. And like I said, for me, pace fishing is something that took me a while to get used to and get confidence in. But with that rig, the bait, the pot, everything that we've talked through, fishing it how we do, I'm now pretty happy and pretty confident in the method. So I hope that's been useful for you. Let us know in the comments 
if you're going to change your pace fishing or add any of those elements into yours but for now obviously really hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button and keep your eyes peeled for another match masterclass coming very soon